which is the right major for you, industrial or biomedical engineering? This is what we will be talking about today, but before we get started, please don't forget to smash the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what our passion is, but a lot of the times that might be unknown until a later stage in our life. So it's important to understand all the implications that come with choosing a specific major. Industrial and biomedical engineering are two of the popular engineering disciplines. And I gotta admit that both seem like attractive majors on paper. But let's dive deeper into the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige to see if these majors are really as attractive as they appear to be so you can make an educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on a wrong degree after college. Let's start off with an easy question. If you've taken physics, chemistry, biology, and anatomy in high school, try to remember if you enjoyed these classes, specifically the content related to molecules, cells, tissue, and organ systems of the human body. If your answer is yes, then biomedical engineering is probably a good choice for you. On the flip side, if physics, chemistry, and biology are not really your thing, but solving math problems including linear algebra, statistics, and calculus is more attractive to you, then industrial engineering is likely right for you. Now, in order to determine if industrial or biomedical engineering is a better fit for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what in the world is industrial engineering? It's a specialized discipline that involves predicting, evaluating, and optimizing any process or system such as a manufacturing line, a supply chain network, or even the layout of an emergency room floor at a hospital using math, engineering analysis, and design principles. Industrial engineers are essential to making any complex process involving people, money, knowledge, information, and equipment more efficient such that an organization can maximize profit or minimize costs. As an industrial engineer, you will be able to work in a wide array of industries including but not limited to aerospace, automotive, food, medical, consumer electronics, defense, finance, and manufacturing. Now let's talk about biomedical engineering. What in the world is that? It's essentially a specialized discipline that seeks to create state-of-the-art healthcare products such as medical equipment, devices, and medicines through medical research and engineering for treating injuries and diseases. As a biomedical engineer, you will leverage knowledge spanning mechanical, electrical, materials engineering, and computer science, develop things like artificial limbs, biomaterials that are compatible with the human body, pacemakers, ECMO machines, 3D printed organs, and even drug delivery methods for treating cancers. Now that you have a high level understanding of these two disciplines, how does the curriculum for these two majors stack up against each other? As you probably can guess, both industrial and biomedical engineering students take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year like math, which includes calculus one and two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, linear algebra, physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, as well as basic chemistry. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you will have to take programming with a common language such as MATLAB or Python for solving engineering problems and an introduction design course intended to build a problem-solving mindset, computer skills, and familiarity with elements of engineering design. From this point on, the courses between these two majors will begin to diverge and become more specialized. So as an industrial engineering major, you will have to take a lot of classes with math, operations, and human factors as the focus. In the second year, you will have to take courses like economic decision making, introducing the relationship between time and money, business operations, financial valuation, cash flow analysis, and accounting principles. You'll also take operations modeling that will teach you how to mathematically model decisions with varying levels of uncertainty and solve these models using optimization, statistical models, and queuing processes. We also have human factors and ergonomics class, introducing how to evaluate and design a product, process, or system to work more efficiently with humans and improve the overall user experience. For example, this class will come in handy if you were asked to improve the efficiency of a manufacturing line as an industrial engineer. Some questions you might need to answer include how much space do you want to give between assemblers, where do you want to place the arbor press or SMT machine in relation to the worker, and where you want to include windows in the factory. This class will present problems involving computer displays, illumination, eye-hand coordination, as well as repetitive and high physical effort tasks. Moving on to junior year, you have to take some type of optimization and computational methods class emphasizing decision making for real world applications from transportation, healthcare, 
and other industrial domains using optimization models, computational algorithms, and programming. Next is intro to Markov processes, which in layman terms is a way to describe and predict a real world process, such as a manufacturing line or traffic jam using math such as statistics and calculus. It's actually a very useful course that is used to solve common challenges faced by many businesses relating to reliability, maintenance, inventory, production, and queues. You should also expect to take a data analytics tools and techniques course teaching how to clean, manipulate, and prepare data for visualization, as well as basic inferential statistical analysis and predictive analytics using Python. Finally, as a senior, there will almost always be some type of advanced simulation class covering complex discrete event systems with applications in industrial and service organizations. Topics include modeling and programming simulations using a high-level computer package such as ProModel or GPSSH. Like every engineering major, there will be a final senior design course where you work on a semester-long design project in industrial and operations engineering with a team that's generally sponsored by a company. So as a biomedical engineering major, you will take a course related to the principles of molecular cell biology and biotechnology that introduces things like molecular building blocks, energetics, transport, metabolism, nucleic acids, gene expression, and genetics through lectures and labs. Moving on to your junior year, you will generally take a systems physiology course introducing topics like homeostasis and neuro, muscle, respiratory, cardiovascular, renal, endocrine, gastrointestinal, and metabolic physiology. Another course you will take includes signals and controls that covers things like signals, systems, and feedback control with an emphasis on biomedical problems using analytical and computational methods, including linear time invariant systems and continuous and discrete time, Laplace and Fourier representations, transfer functions, pool zero analysis, stability, convolution, and sampling. This course will be followed by two courses called Biomedical Measurements 1 and 2. Biomedical Measurements 1 is designed to develop skills for collecting and analyzing biomedical measurements and learning proper usage of electronic equipment, including oscilloscopes, function generators, and DACs. Biomedical Measurements 2, on the other hand, will focus on labs designed to develop basic instrumentation and analysis skills for physiological and biological measurements. Emphasis will be placed on techniques involving light, such as spectroscopy and microscopy, and sound such as ultrasound. Like all engineering majors, biomedical engineering students will also propose and complete a senior design project with a small team in an area of biomedical engineering, such as biomedical instrumentation, biosensors, tissue engineering, biological signal processing, biological modeling and simulation, clinical imaging, or informational systems. You will also have the choice to choose three or four biomedical engineering electives and several professional electives from a list of courses based on your personal interests. To give you a sense of what options will be available to you, this is a list of electives that my school offered. So the question to ask yourself is, are you more interested in the design, development, and testing of artificial limbs life support machines for critically ill patients and even astronauts, organ implants, and diagnostic equipment using CAD and programming? Or are you more interested in process design and optimization using simulation tools and math to help an organization like a factory, bank, or even restaurant maximize profits and minimize waste? So now that we have a good sense of the curriculum, let's compare the annual salaries and see what the current and future job outlook looks like for these two types of engineers. Let's begin with the salary breakdown for biomedical engineers. The median salary is $97,410, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $60,680 and $154,750 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location will contribute to this salary gap, so someone with 10 plus years experience working in California or Massachusetts would probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. The total number of available biomedical engineering jobs in 2020 was 19,300, and it's expected to see a 6% increase in job growth between 2020 and 2030, which is below average compared to the overall engineering field of 7%. Now moving on to industrial engineering, we see that the median salary is $95,300, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $60,850 and $129,600 respectively, and the median salary of industrial industrial and biomedical engineers is essentially the same. The total number of available industrial engineering jobs in 2020 was 292,000 
which is 15 times more than the number of available biomedical engineering jobs. So job security is not great for biomedical engineers. It's expected to see a whopping 14% increase in job growth between 2020 and 2030, which is exceptional and way above average compared to the overall engineering field of 7%. Industrial engineering beats biomedical engineering in terms of job prospects by a long shot. And job security is something you will not have to worry about. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. Now the way I have to find prestige is how well known is the company you work at. And I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on the total number of top 100 Fortune 500 companies that offer industrial and biomedical engineering jobs. It came down to the wire and here are the results. 10 out of the 100 companies offer biomedical engineering jobs, including Amazon, Apple, CVS Health, McKesson, Cardinal Health, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, General Electric, Abbott Laboratories, and Thermo Fisher. By contrast, 54 out of the 100 companies offered industrial engineering jobs, including Walmart, Amazon, Apple, CVS Health, United Health Group, McKesson, Amerisource Bergen, Kroger, Ford, GM, Chevron, Target, Citigroup, Meta, UPS, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, FedEx, Philip 66, Lockheed Martin, Disney, Archer Daniels Midland, Albertsons, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Cisco, Morgan Stanley, HCA Healthcare, Cisco, Charter Communications, Merck, Public Supermarkets, Allstate, Tyson Foods, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Oracle, American Express, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. All right, summarizing everything we talked about. The curriculum for industrial and biomedical engineering is neck and neck in terms of difficulty. What's common between these two majors is the math and engineering problem solving mindset. While biomedical engineering classes focus on equipping students with expertise in engineering design and analysis of physiologic measuring and diagnostic products, as well as quantitative analysis of the human body's normal and abnormal functions, industrial engineering classes are geared towards students wishing to gain expertise rooted in math and simulation, as well as modeling tools to design, predict, and optimize processes. Moving on to salary, biomedical and industrial engineers make similar amounts of money where the median salary for biomedical engineers is $97,410, while for industrial engineers, it's $95,300. Finally, the job security and prestige level that comes with industrial engineering blows biomedical engineering out of the water. So definitely ask yourself if these two things matter to you. At the end of the day, the goal is to pick a major that you can build a career out of and enjoy doing for a lifetime. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing biomedical or industrial engineering. You might be someone who already knows that your dream job is to work at Johnson & Johnson as a biomedical engineer to design hip implants or surgical instruments that saves millions of lives. Or you want to work at Tesla as an industrial engineer to design and optimize their material flow process at their gigafactory in Nevada. I think knowing what you want already in college is fantastic, but rarely is this the case and more often times than not, you won't know exactly what you want until after working several full-time jobs or internships. If this applies to you, then I definitely recommend going with industrial engineering because the compensation, job growth, job security, and prestige blows biomedical engineering out of the water. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.